me ask you about Poland, what's going on over there with the missiles that landed? I am aware of the reports. It would be imprudent for me to comment on them at this point. I am in close touch with our Polish allies and we are monitoring the situation very closely. What happens if it we wind up finding out these missiles were in fact from Russia? As I said, uh, we are monitoring the situation. I am receiving updates regarding this uh, report and very uh, closely in touch with our Polish allies at this time. It would be imprudent for me to comment further right now. On suit, on suit toujours au proche tous les développements internationaux et je n'ai pas à ce moment-là des commentaires précis. Mais je veux vous assurer que on suit le gouvernement, le Premier ministre, la ministre Jolie, nous tous. Nous sommes en contact avec tous nos alliés, le Premier ministre aujourd'hui et avec ses homologues internationaux. Là, on, on ouais. C'est ça, c'est ça qu'il faut voir là, actuellement, ce qui manque comme information. Est-ce est que c'était intentionnel ou non? Tout ce qu'on peut comprendre, c'était un feu massif là, qui est envoyé vers l'Ukraine, qui a dévié, il y a des missiles qui ont dévié vers la Pologne. Euh, c'est sûr, certain que là, c'est une, une question qui mérite un discernement dans le sens de dire, OK, si c'est accident, il ne faut pas prendre ça comme une attaque directe contre la Pologne. Sinon, ça devient une attaque contre le temps et là, ça vient de compliquer les choses. Donc, c'est pour ça que c'est important que les experts là, sur le terrain confirment euh, si c'était par accident. Et de... Mais avant de déclencher, de dire que c'est une attaque directement prévue envers la Pologne, ça, c'est euh, la, la décision qui est importante à, à éclaircir avant. Puis quel rôle est-ce que le Canada devrait jouer là-dedans là en ce moment? J'imagine qu'il y a des consultations parce qu'avant l'article 5... Oui, non, c'est bien sûr, c'est bien entendu. Là. Mais avant, avant de même penser à invoquer l'article 5, il faut vraiment que les experts là-bas confirment est-ce que c'est intentionnel ou non. Ça, c'est la première question à répondre. S'il y avait une intention, là, ça devient critique. Si c'était accidentel, c'est sûr que là, ça faut demander aux Russes d'être... de ne de, de pas, de pas reproduire les, un incident de genre-là, bien évidemment. Pour l'instant, ce que je peux, je peux te dire, ouais. Merci. Non, non, I, look, of course there are concerns. Uh, we, we expect our security forces to keep track of this thing, uh, these kinds of issues, and, uh, and we'll follow uh, the process as it goes forward. But sure, there are concerns. We're aware of them. Uh, CSIS and the RCMP are aware of them, and we're glad that they, they are in policing those, uh, those boundaries. Yeah, and just seeing uh, China try to you know, get trade secrets through, through the hydro utilities out do you feel like you know, current laws or regulations around espionage are you know, up to snuff uh, for you know, what we may be seeing uh, down the road as uh, China continues to meddle? Look, there's a good there's a good set of laws in place, uh, and and uh, it's certainly a, a live issue that we are uh, we're monitoring. It's not a new issue. Uh, I knew about this as an academic long before I got to this place. So um, it is something that we'll continue to be vigilant about. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, so good afternoon, and uh, a few moments ago, the Liberals moved a motion to end the debate on a motion that's designed to uh, hamper the opposition's ability to hold the government to account. So uh, a very undemocratic move to stifle debate on this motion, which will have the effect of stifling uh, accountability. Uh, we know the Liberals are uh, experiencing a lot of pain at committees as the committees go through their long list of scandals and corruption. Uh, what the Liberals are attempting to do is to drain committees of the resources that they need to conduct their hearings and conduct their investigations into Liberal corruption and scandals. Uh, everything from the $54 million Arrive Can app scandal where the committee brought to light the uh, fact that this app could have been designed in uh, a weekend and for a much lower cost, around $250,000 instead of the $54 million that the government billed to taxpayers. At committee, we've uh, discovered uh, things like the impact of, uh, of interference by the communist regime in China into Canadian elections. There's a long list of things that uh, opposition parties have brought to light because of the important work at committees. And this move to extend hours in the House to draw resources away from committees uh, will, of course, have a negative impact on the opposition's ability to do uh, our job. But Conservatives 
won't stop. We'll continue to fight the government's inflationary agenda, their massive deficit spending, which is driving up the cost of government, which in, which in turn drives up the cost of living. We're going to continue to use the tools that we do have uh, to hold this government to account and to bring their scandals and corruption to light. We will be voting against this motion. Unfortunately, the Liberals have a partner to cover up their scandal and corruption. Uh, the NDP have decided to assist the government as part of their costly coalition uh, to, uh, to, to draw these resources away from committee. So Conservatives will be voting against this, but this is one more example of an undemocratic move by this government. Uh, Justin Trudeau clearly tries to run from accountability every chance he gets. He's done things like prorogue parliament uh, when committees are investigating the WE scandal where he tried to give a half billion dollars to his friends at the WE organization. He uh, called an early election as he was fighting with a committee over documents related to the Winnipeg lab scandal. And, uh, and this is just another example of Justin Trudeau afraid of parliamentary accountability and trying to limit the ability of the opposition to do its job. What do you say is an appropriate number of MPs to speak on a bill at second reading? When members of parliament want to represent their constituents, when they want to uh, speak on behalf of people who have told them that they have a concern with a bill, either what's in the bill or what's not in the bill, uh, then it's the role of those members of parliament to bring those concerns to the House of Commons. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the word parliament comes from the French word to speak. The whole point of this place is to have members of parliament come and advocate for their constituents. And uh, so the, the attempts to limit that, to hamper that, uh, hampers the ability uh, for members of parliament to do their job. Sorry, a question about Poland, please. Um, AP reported Russian missiles killed two people in Poland, a NATO ally. I'd like to ask you if you think um, NATO's Article 5 should be what The article says an attack against a NATO country is an attack against the alliance. I appreciate the question. Obviously, uh, there's, uh, uh, this is a developing story that I just learned about during question period, so I haven't yet had a chance to fully uh, be briefed on, on, on the situation. But of course, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with uh, anybody who is affected by this. Uh, it's a tragic situation in Ukraine, and it has long been flagged that, uh, uh, that this type of uh, uh, thing was a possibility. But I'm going to let my colleague, the, our Shadow Minister for Foreign Affairs, to, uh, to, to make a more formal response once we have more details. I'm curious, how do you think the government should be responding to this news out of all of these Canadians and what should the Canadian yeah. do? I, I understand this is a very important issue with a, a evolving situation, but as I said, I, I just learned about this a few moments ago in question period, so I'll let my shadow minister uh, for foreign affairs or, or defense comment uh, specifically once we have a, a better understanding of what actually happened and, uh, and we'll go from there. Going back to the motion, the government has implied that you guys are putting up loads of speakers to the clock basically, in the House. Um, taking into account what you just said, do you think that there should ever be a circumstance where a party should <laughs> limit the number of speakers in order to have government business dealt with next week? Well, I'd say a couple things to that. First of all, I'd say a couple things to that. First of all, uh, Canadians did not give Justin Trudeau a majority mandate. Uh, they elected a minority parliament. So it's incumbent upon the government to work with other parties to get its legislation uh, through the House. When they don't do that, then obviously it's going to be more difficult uh, for them to pass their legislation. But it's important to remember that the House of Commons calendar and our, the daily schedule is as much a check on and balance on government power uh, as anything else in, in our system. And when the government's trying to rig the clock to try to limit the number of days that opposition parties have to study the bill or the impacts on the bill by cramming the debate into a shorter number of days off the calendar, uh, it, it actually undermines the check and balance on the government's power in the House of Commons. So it's an important fact to remember as well. It's, it's a little bit like if, uh, if a sports team tried to just pause the clock while they had the ball just so they could try to score more, more points and, and, and unilaterally do that. It's up to the government to prioritize its legislation. Uh, by the way, the accusations are completely false. I mean, they, they, they're, they're totally fudging the numbers on some of these things, pointing to a uh, number of, of days of debate 
for example, but not telling Canadians that on some of those days when they called the bill, they only gave the House an hour to debate it, uh, yet they're trying to count that uh, into their total. But again, it, it, it's a bit of a bait and switch. The, they're trying to talk about the amount of, of, of hours in the House of Commons, but what they're not telling Canadians is the number of committee meetings that are going to be cancelled. Just as committees are doing deep dives into things like Chinese interference into Canadian elections, something that the Prime Minister has known about for a long time and has done nothing. Uh, things like the ArriveCan app, where taxpayers were pay billed for $54 million for something that should have cost less than a million. Those are the types of things that we are learning about at committee and highlighting, and those are the types of meetings that are going to be cancelled. We know this because that's what happened the last time they did this. They, they tried to pull a move like this in the spring, and in one week, 13 parliamentary committees were cancelled because resources were moved from committee meetings into the House of Commons. So that's what this move is really all about. Speaking of uh, the Arrive Can study, I uh, saw reporting today that CDSA hadn't produced the documents that the committee had asked of it. Um, do you think that this warrants looking at contempt of the House? Well, uh, ultimately, it'd be up to committee to the committee to decide that. I know our uh, the chair of that committee has expressed his disappointment that the department has been unable to do something as simple as provide documentation as to who got paid, uh, why the contract was given, and why it was structured the way it was. Those are the types of things that you sh you would assume they would have at their fingertips because if they had done their due diligence on the front end, that would all be in one file folder in a drawer somewhere. Uh, but the fact that they can't produce it is telling in and of itself. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why the Conservatives moved a motion that was ultimately passed to call in the Auditor General to get to the bottom of this, because clearly something's going on. Thanks. Merci beaucoup. Thanks. You, you went asked for a couple of days out in the House of Commons. Who the 11 candidates? Uh, is there some any world in which you would reveal that information? There is a place to deal with national security matters. That's at ENSICOP. That's where all members on that committee are uh, have national security clearances. It can handle with documents in a safe and secure manner. I think if members of the Conservative Party want to look at information like that, that is the best place for it. Not in the House of Commons. I mean, it's not, in no way should that be revealed in the House of Commons. It's, it's not for my determination. It would be a matter of national security. If something is deemed a matter of national security, that's a place where parliamentarians can have that access in a safe and secure manner, which is what I think Canadians expect. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> catching up. No. No, it's a, it's a challenging situation, much like uh, the Beijing Olympics were from a human rights perspective. Uh, I don't think any final decisions have been made. Um, I've been waiting my whole life to cheer for a Canadian team in the World Cup. I have usually been forced to cheer for, for Holland, and <laughs> part of me will still be cheering, at least in the, in the group stage, for the Netherlands. Uh, but first and foremost, we want to make sure that our, our team is, is prepared and supported, and uh, we'll do our best to do that. In your opinion, should there be a Canadian delegation, whether it's the Prime Minister, whether it's uh, Minister saint -Ange. I'm certain there'll be a Canadian delegation there. I, mm -hmm. I know of even some Qatari residents in Milton who are planning to head over there to cheer on Team Canada. Uh, so I know there's going to be lots of Canadians cheering for, t for Team Canada. I'm going to be cheering for Team Canada. Uh, and uh, I don't think a final decision has been made. Okay. Thanks. Merci. Yeah.